All right, three camera accessories that I think are essential for filmmaking and photography. I mean, that was a quick intro. All right, we're gonna start off quite easy with the most essential lighting, then sound, and then some lens accessories like filters. So to begin with, you need good lighting, whether it's photography or videography. And lighting can come in many different forms and sizes and price tags and what have you. We usually work with, you know, normal big photography lights with big soft boxes. We also use smaller LED panels and even smaller LED panels with RGB functions. And all of these three types of lighting, I think are really essential for both photography and videography. The bigger, more normal lights with soft boxes are really useful for uh, normal portraits, product photography, you know, what have you, when you need to light up a scene to look realistic. Then we have the smaller LED panels. These are really great because they're battery driven, they're portable and they're lightweight. And for these types of videos, I actually only use a LED panel. Um, it's, it's quite easy to move around to quickly adjust all of the settings, the temperature, Oh, oh crap, what was it? So for smaller productions, we tend to use this light, but in most cases, we actually use a combination between the two. We have the more normal softbox lights, maybe from above or for 45 degree angle, and we have this LED panel too, maybe fill up some negative light, um, have it to set to a more warmer tungsten setting, uh, just to create a more dynamic scene. And then we have the ultra small, ultra portable, RGB small LED lights. I have one above my head that is blasting down purple and one back here that is blue at the moment. Now both of these lights can be changed to any color you want and the bigger light above my head can actually be changed to normal lighting as well. Uh, so from 2900 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin and you can also have it preset to a bunch of different you know, paparazzi, strobe, uh, all these different kind of modes that could be useful in a filmmaking scenario. All right, so, so that is the one of the light strobe changes. Um, now that is quite annoying. I believe that is lightning or something. Yeah, you get the point. You can change it to a bunch of different colors and settings. There we go. So that is the three most essential lighting setup tips and gadgets I would recommend as necessary accessories for photography and filmmaking. More normal, bigger lights that can be used for softer light for portraits, product photography, what have you portable LED panels that can be used on the fly to adjust settings and you know just make an interesting composition and the smaller ultra portable RGB LED lights that can really adjust to whichever setting and mode and feeling you want. Now these have actually been in use in most of our product photography. Um, in this photo we had it to you know emphasize the liquid in the bottle. In this photo we had it to just emphasize drinks and the limes just blast the side of the glass with you know just a, a bit of a different color that would make it a bit more intriguing. Now next up is sound. So I mean it, it comes as no surprise for photography sound is kind of irrelevant but for video sound is like half the product and, and people usually forget you know people just spend money and time to get the perfect lighting setup and then they forget about oh crap I have terrible audio and and that could really be a turn off for a lot of people. Most people could actually accept lower quality in a video rather than to accept lower audio quality. So it's, it's really important to have great audio and to monitor your settings to, to make it perfect. So it wouldn't come as a surprise, the built-in microphones in these types of DSLR cameras aren't that great. Right now I'm using a lav mic. These ones I could really recommend, they're portable. Uh, it, it's wireless so I can move around. Um, and the sound quality is not affected. You know, if, if I move around, if I go back here, you can still you can still hear my voice pretty clear, I hope, because the, the microphone is attached to me. If you have a shotgun mic on your camera, the audio quality will be affected depending on how far away the subject is from the camera. Now, for a shotgun mic, I want to recommend the Rode VideoMic Go. This is a really good and really cheap shotgun microphone. I believe it's about 60 bucks and it delivers great sound. Uh, right now I have a dead cat on it, but you can use it with, with the normal puff that comes on it. And for lav mics, I'm using the Ceremonic Blink 500 B2. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really complicated name. So this one has a receiver on the camera and the transmitter here. Now this can actually be used as a microphone in itself. You see it has these grills on top here, so I can speak in this like a typical microphone. However, I can also plug in the yeah normal lav, typical lav, uh, into the 
transmitter and I can get this sort of audio quality. Now you can judge for yourself if this is the audio quality that suits your style and filmmaking and if it's to your liking. Now just a quick side note, if you're doing some sort of voiceover I really recommend a typical USB mic. I believe this is the Rode NT USB Mini, something like that. And they deliver better audio quality than the, the lav mics or the shotgun mics and they're really not that expensive. I believe it's 100 bucks for the microphone, something like that. Now last but not least I want to talk about filters for your lens. Now this is more or less optional. It, it's to create a a certain type of style and look to your footage that couldn't really be accomplished without a filter. Now you can scour the internet and find the particular filter that suits your style the best or suits your mood for the, the project the best, but these are the filters that I use most commonly. So starting off we have the ND filter. Now this is probably the most common used filter for a camera. It's it's really just sunglasses for your lens, right? So if you're Outside, it's a it's a bright day, the sun is shining. Particularly if you're filming a video, you don't want to crank up the shutter speed to some unnatural like 1 over 4000. So you use a ND filter so that you can have a open aperture and with the shutter speed at the right you know, amount for whatever frame rate you're shooting in. And the two other filters I want to talk about today are actually brought by Canva. You can check out their website in the description down below. But these filters are black mist filter and soft focus filter. Now these are more stylistic filters, right? You use them to accomplish a certain specific look to your footage. So the black mist filter and the soft focus filter are actually kind of similar and they're pretty much hard to distinguish most of the time. But a black mist filter really kind of just blooms all the light that is, you know, pointed straight to the lens. Um, so you get this more, more of a dreamy look, you get a, a bit of a more separation from the background because all the light is is blooming out. It, it, it's it's kind of hard to explain actually, but it, it, it's a more dreamy vibe in the photos and the videos. And the soft focus filter is pretty much what it sounds like. It's a softer focus. So it's kind of an in-between thing, you know, between a, a shallow depth of field and a out of focus subject. It, it, it's it's really hard to find a scenario where this filter is applicable, to me at least, to what I'm shooting, because I'm shooting mostly portraits and product photography. And I, I guess you can create a more of a dreamy look with this filter, but um, for the type of work I'm doing in a day-to-day -day basis, this is pretty much not applicable to what I'm doing. But however, it's a really, really cool filter, and I've actually begun to use it more and more try to incorporate it with my day-to-day -day work like could i take a product shot with some blooming light and some dreamy out of focus you know soft focus uh, mood it, it's you know you really have to find the perfect project or perfect portrait opportunity to shoot that particular picture because they're so niche like compared to the nd filter that is pretty much yeah all right it's sunglasses we need to use them when we're outside these filters, black mist and soft focus filter, are really only stylistic filters and you need to find the right opportunity to use them. All right, so I guess that was kind of the quick and easy explanation of what I think are essential accessories to filmmaking and photography. We have lighting, that is, of course, really, really essential. We have audio, sound, it's, it's most it is, it's not essential to photography, but for videography, it's really essential. I, I would argue it's 50-50 between light and audio. And last but not least, we talked about filters. Now, you can scour the internet, there's tons of filters out there for every particular scenario. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy, actually. You, you have this blue mist filter, yellow something filter, something mirror filter. You have this anamorphic look-alike filter. I, I mean, there's, there's actually a filter for every particular style and every particular scenario that you can think of. The, the hard thing is to find a filter for that particular uh, thing. All right, so I believe that is it for me today. I hope you kind of learned something about the lighting, the audio and the filters. I will link all the stuff down below if you want to check out the lighting, the audio or the filters. And with that said, I hope you learned something. I hope these tips were, were useful. If you found something new essential that you can use in your work, in particular, I would guess these RGB lights, they're, they're really handy. Uh, everyone should have one, they're, they're, they're really great. And that is about everything. You thought I was gonna sign off, right? Yeah. <laughs>